Hello my lovelies, Rob here again from Kick by Garage. Now in this video I'm going to be revisiting my uh, headset walls and I'm going to do a little bit of a conversion which you might find interesting. So do yourself a favour, grab the old coffee and I'll uh, roll the intro. Whoop! <laughs> Messing around with these cameras, batteries going flat. My credit the merang, all the sprung in log of villa come in the talk. In your novice black out to other forty frog for what to do or draw. Can we phone can a sudden come at the husband to come as of the other brother last summer? Right, because of the uh, uh what what we're gonna call it, the uh, the, the problem <laughs> with the last headset I was fitting on my series one. I've now been away from uh home a couple of weeks and I have uh, received a shiny new standard type uh, uh, headset which I'm going to be fitting into the scooter. Now something I've uh, been through before but what I thought I'd do is show you how to um, fit the uh, cups themselves because I haven't done that one before uh, because I, I borrowed a threaded bar from a neighbour. Now uh, what I've done this time is I've actually gone out and bought myself one. What a cheapskate, eh? Um, so what I do is, when I'm fitting the headset cups themselves, here you go, this is the Series 1 early Series 2 type. These are a lot shorter than the uh, Series 3 types. Um, and that's something to uh, be aware of. I was actually thinking about buying the, uh, the MB Developments one, but I've, <laughs> I've got one of those lying around. And the only way I can fit that is by uh, machining it down in my lathe. But uh, what I ended up doing in the end is buying this uh, uh, Casa Lambretta one from uh, Rimini Lambretta. The reason why I did that, uh, I was getting a bit fed up of not having that scooter on the road. And uh, the lads from uh, Rimini Lambretta, they sent stuff out really, really quick. So this was ordered on... Uh, on Thursday, I think, and I got this on uh, Monday morning. So that's excellent, all the way from Italy. Now, uh, I've got a little bit of an issue. <laughs> I did actually have, like I said, was gonna fit the uh, MB one. The uh, the cup in the top, I've got a little bit of footage here. I'll, uh, I'll throw it up. So this is the original one. Nice tight fit there have to obviously press that into place. This is the one I got from MB. Uh, the cup that sits, or the bearing race that sits in the top on the chrome uh, ring, uh, I found that a little bit loose. Now, I, I uh, did uh, send the boys at MB Developments, or MB Scooters as it's called now, uh, I sent them an email and they said simply that I should just uh, use some uh, bearing Loctite on there to keep that uh, in place. Now, yep, yeah, that'll probably work, but uh, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a true believer of uh, when I get parts, I really like them to fit as they should to start off with. That's sort of my little beef there. So I'm not going to be using that. I'm going to be using the uh, Casa Lambretta one, which uh, actually fits properly in the chrome ring. Yes. Now, uh, I thought I'd just uh, show you. Let me press my screen there because I get abstinences. Abstinences, that's a good uh, English word. Um, so what I've done here, I've got the uh, threaded bar. I have two uh, half nuts. You could cut it off and uh, weld it, I suppose, if you want a permanent uh, solution. But threaded bar, always handy to have in the garage, I reckon. So <laughs> finally bought myself one. This actually, incidentally, is the tool for bringing in the uh, main bearing in the, uh, in the, oh, what's it called? <laughs> I'm completely lost. I've just come home from work. I'm really tired. Sorry about that. But this is uh, a part of the tool for bringing in, pulling in the main bearing in your uh, Lambretta engine case from MB Scooters, incidentally. Uh, the cool thing about this is it fits perfectly on the cup there, because what I was originally thinking of doing was uh, uh, throwing some metal in my lathe, 
and making something that will uh, hold that straight. Because the important thing here, obviously, is that these are parallel. The bottom one and the top brace is parallel, uh, are parallel to each other. And obviously on the Series 2, you've got this uh, dust shield that fits on there. I just had to make sure that it wasn't interfering with that, and it isn't, so that's good. So here is my uh, random bit of metal, metal that I've just shaped the centerpiece here. It's basically just so that I hold that stable and flat when I uh, wind it in the frame. So uh, let's go and do that. Now, the special thing that I'm going to do on this video is um, I've heard about this a lot. And before I get 300 messages on, uh, on the feed here, uh, this is actually a conversion that has been done. I think someone mentioned Dave, Dave Webster or something like, like that in the 70s, but I'm pretty sure it's been a, a modification that's been done uh, for years and years and years. Everybody knows about it. I thought I'd throw it on the video just because uh, not, not everybody, not all of my followers or my watchers have uh, uh, know about this conversion. So what I'm going to do, I have bought two sets of races and I'm actually going to take out the balls and I'm gonna use loose balls like we do in the Vespa. Now, the reasoning behind that is that if you uh, use loose balls, use as many as you can, you almost get a uh, double, uh, ah, what's it called? <laughs> you get at least twice the, uh, the support from the uh, ball bearings and you get a lot smoother action on the uh, on the handlebars there. So I'm gonna th give this a go. I know it's a lot of fiddling about, so I'm uh, gonna roll up my sleeves and, uh, and definitely give it a try. It's gotta be better than the last solution <laughs> that I did. <laughs> okay, keep watching. So what I've done now, I've wound down my threaded bar. Now, <laughs> what I should have done is cut this, obviously. <laughs> But because I'm such a cheapskate and I uh, might use this to thread it by for, bar for something else, uh, I'm not going to make it into a permanent tool. Now I have got the uh, lower spacer here uh, that I made and uh, everything's good. And so now is the uh, tricky part. So this is how I think, or at least I imagine, I'll be able to fit the fork uh, with the loose bearing. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to use my favorite marine grease, which is quite stodgy. And uh, I have to uh, fit the bear. I'm going to <laughs> grease the inner bearing race there, and uh, fit the bearings individually in the blob of grease so that they should stay put. Problem being, it's going to be a real nightmare to fit the ones at the top uh, with the loose fork. So what I decided to do is fit this. Um, yeah, my little lifting table thingy jobby, and uh, I'm going to. Uh, grease the bearings up and uh, fit them on that race and then gently lift them up with the aid of that. So hopefully once I've got that into place and I've jacked that high enough up, then I can mess around with the loose bearings at the top. First thing I need to do, obviously I've got two uh, sets of uh, bearings here, standard ones, and I'm just gonna pop out the, uh, the bearings themselves into this tub. I'm not sure if I can use the double the amount of bearings. It would be pretty cool if I could, but I'm gonna try and fit basically as many of these as I can out of these two uh, bearing races. Hopefully, I am really, really hoping that uh, I can zoom in enough for you to see this, but you know, this grease is quite, quite thick and stodgy, the marine, the marine grease. Hopefully, if I use enough of this, and you shouldn't really be too worried about using too much because uh, all the access uh, will get squeezed away anyway. Let's see if I can uh, get this all the way around there. Stodginess. And I will start placing the uh, loose bearings around the fork. Let's see if they will stay put. Ah. Yeah, it's looking promising. So this is a tricky bit and uh, definitely once you fit this, if you drop the fork down, 
uh, while you're trying to fit the bearings at the top, you're going to end up with all sorts of problems. Let me move my camera so you can see what I'm doing. Lifting up the scooter, which is not a, not ideal. Oh. <laughs> they still stay in put, which is a miracle. Right, she's in place there. Brilliant, and I didn't lose any uh, bearings. <laughs> That went easier than I thought it would. So uh, next job is the one on the top. I'll do some zoomy zoomy. So hopefully you'll be able to see. I have uh, now uh, put the loose balls on the top there. Just out of, uh, out of interest, uh, I got seven more bearings on the uh, bottom race, which is considerably, so considerably more than uh, normal. Uh, but on the top here, I, uh, because the bearings... Now, almost the same size as the space on the ring. I've got loads more uh, bearings on there. Uh, there's quite a few. I'm not going to count them. <laughs> so what I'm going to do now is I've uh, packed this with grease. And as you know, the fork is just balancing on that little lift of mine. I'm pretty sure you could put a, a case or something on there, under there if you haven't got one of those lifts if you want to do this conversion. The only problem is that I, that I can see really is when you have to take all this apart at some point, uh, it could be a little bit tricky. You're going to lose uh, bearings all over the place. And yeah, so uh, this conversion at least is considerably cheaper than, um, than any of the other fancy, like the SIP conversion. And this apparently works. This is because this is what the racers have been doing for years. So I'm just going to tighten that down by hand. So the tricky bit here uh, is like you've got this lock ring that goes on the top there. Um, oh, oh, what is it? A lock washer. Let me find that. So you've got this uh, lock washer that fits in there. They've got a little groove in the front there. If you've got a series one, then you'll probably find that you haven't got the groove. <laughs> it's it, it really is worth... Uh, I can't even get that in. It's not going in the groove. Du, 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 du. You have to get it in straight, Rob, and then it'll go in. Or will it? It doesn't want to go in. Yes, it does. There you go. So what this does is... And then you've got the lock, lock ring that goes over the top again. And what you do is you have to hold this and tighten down the uh, tighten down the top there. But I'm just going to show you um, what the fork is supposed to look like once I've bolted all this together. Uh, I'm going to uh, fit the wheel and everything, so I've got some weight on the fork. And I'm going to show you what you need to look out for when you're tightening these. Well, this is the tricky bit. Now, what I've got to try and do now is uh, tighten up the uh, top nut there. And it's really important that the, uh, the wheel is loose. As you can see here, I've tightened it a tad too much. So what I, what I think I'm gonna do so I can judge that better is I think the easiest way to do that is uh, tilt the scooter over a little bit. So what I'm gonna do is take off uh, the block of wood on this side of the stand, if I can, would be nice. Uh, there you go. So now it's lopsided a little bit, not a lot, just a bit. And I'm gonna have to try and loosen off that nut a little, little bit. The top, the, the bearing race at the top. I need to hold the wheel while I'm doing it. It's not, I don't think it's much I need to, there you go. So that now drops by itself. And if I tighten it just a tiny, tiny bit. Ah, I loosened it. <laughs> if I tighten it 
So what I want to, what, it, what you need to do is to find that golden, so it needs to be tight. I mean, you don't want any fore and aft movement. Uh, and this is how I found out that my uh, bearings were shattered, apart from the terrible handling. I thought my uh, silent blocks were buggered or something like that. It, it was, it, it's really uh, quite scary to ride with busted bearings. But as you can see now, that was, I only tightened it a millimeter, but it's, It's not flopping to the side by itself. So I'm gonna loosen that. Just a tiny, tiny fraction at a time. There you go. So that's where I want it. Maybe even a tad slacker. Almost. <laughs> this is the trick of it. This is the bit if uh, the sip bearing kit works on your uh, fork this is uh, that's where it's going to save a lot of the guesswork so that's that's where it is where i like it to be i'm just gonna rock it just make sure so yeah i think it's it's probably a little bit easier when you've packed it full of bearings like i've done now because uh, it uh, withstands a bit more with a bit more uh, A bit more pressure on the bearings, I reckon. You've got a much, much higher uh, bearing load. So this, that is where I want it to be. The hard pit now, actually, is uh, I'm using the uh, MB, excellent MB uh, top locking ring. They're really good, I like, I like those. Um, and what I have to do now is I have to hold the Bearing race itself, the, lo the lower bearing race at the top, I have to hold that itself and tighten the lock ring without moving the lower bearing race. And that's supposed to be the job of the lock ring, but it's not really uh, <laughs> very good at doing its job, basically. Now, where is my tool? I've got the lower one here. And I'm actually going to be using the uh, Vespa tool. I think this is better than the uh, claw type one. The one that I got from MB Benz anyway, so I'm going to be, be using that one there, the Bozzetti. I'm going to see if I can tighten this up. Maybe we need to have a look here. What? I'm going to have to hold this with my feet. Hold the wheel with your feet, lad. Uh, I'm going to have to tighten this down properly. And hopefully, without moving the lower race. Now, after you've ridden a couple of times, you will find that you probably have to uh, retighten this. So that's why it's uh, a really handy tip. Do not use zip ties on the front, on your wires at the front here. And make sure that the cables are just long enough so you can pop off the headset. This makes this job in particular uh, a lot, lot easier. So can I tighten it? Without, tight, without tightening the lower bearing. It seems, <laughs> seems like it's working. What I like about the Buzzetti uh, Vespa type socket is that it's got four, four prongs that attack the uh, lock ring. So you've got much better purchase there. So, here's the moment of truth. <laughs> have I tightened the whole assembly? So I'll bring you down here again. We'll have a look at that wheel, see if it still flops about, and it doesn't. 
So this is this is the nightmare. <sighs> Probably take me about two or three goes. <laughs> Uh, it actually took me about four goes. Uh, what I ended up having to do, and that's probably the norm, what I ended up having to do is um, tighten it just a little bit looser than I wanted it. And then when I tightened the lock ring, that did pull it round enough so that it was tight enough so they don't get that fore and aft movement. Easiest way to check that is just hold the bearing cup at the top there. No movement there. But you still want it so that it's uh, really, really loose um, on, the, on the bearings themselves because that does prolong bearing life. And hopefully with this new conversion here, I, uh, yeah, this should last uh, quite a bit longer than they did last time. Um, so what I aimed for was this. <laughs> yeah, do you see that? <laughs> I want it loose. I want it to fall by itself, but I don't want it... Uh, I don't want it to, um, at the moment, it's, it's sitting on my hydraulics on that side. But uh, when, I, uh, when I let it go over there, it should flop over by itself. And uh, like I said, it should be tight enough so they don't get the old uh, fore and aft. So what I'm going to do now is uh, bolt this up finished. And I think in uh, the next video, I've got a, a review coming. And uh, I, I'll tell you what I think about the uh, new steering thing. Or maybe I'll just make a quick, a quick video where I uh, tell you what I think about the steering uh, with the new uh, bearing system. That Well, new from the 60s. <laughs> anyway, I'll stop babbling and I'll uh, let you go. I'll love you and leave you. Uh, don't forget, if you uh, want to support the channel, you can do the old uh, buy merged or just buy me a cup of coffee. And uh, I'll see you all in the next one. And thanks for watching. Ta-ra! Messing around with these cameras, battery is going flat. I'm a clear to the merang, all the sprung in log of villa come under talk. In your novice like a two of the forty frog, for what to do or draw. Can we phone, can I send them come? Don't have some two covers of the other brother, love some.